The USAID Resilient Waters Program aimed to build more resilient and water secure southern African communities and ecosystems through improving management of transboundary natural resources and increasing access to safe drinking water and sanitation services. The geographic focus was on the Limpopo River Basin, home to 18 million people living in parts of South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe and Mozambique. The Okavango River Basin, with its population of 1 million people in Angola, Namibia and Botswana, and in the Buzi, Pungwe and Save Tri Basin, with a population of 5.5 million people across parts of Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Overlaying the Limpopo and Okavango River Basins, the program also worked in the Great Limpopo Transfrontier Conservation Area and the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area. These videos introduce some of the Resilient Waters grantees and the progress that was made within the five-year program period from 2018 to 2023. My name is Tafaz Chagwa and I work uh, at Dambar Wildlife Trust. I am Jacinta Laison. Trabalho na Agência Nacional para o Controle da Qualidade Ambiental. Meu nome é Elsa Glória de Jesus Monjan. Trabalho na Agência Nacional para o Controle da Qualidade Ambiental, Delegação de Gaza. So my name is Graham McCulloch. I'm a director of the EcoExist Trust. All right, my name is Rudolf Chaveonja. I work for Integrated Rural Development and Nature Conservation. So my name is uh, Nick Turon and <clears throat> and I work for the Cricket Canyons Biosphere region. My name is Joylene Jasamu. My name is Rutendo Masia. I'm from Maru Cyber Connect. My name is Britta Hackenberg. I'm the team leader for the NNF program Fisheries and Freshwater. I'm based in Bintuk. And my name is Alan Gigi. I also work for the Namibia Nature Foundation. We are Papa Lelu Trust. My name is Wilhelmine Leroux. And my name is, uh, my name is Adi Poso. My dear. I'm with Peter and Jofon. I work for Pan Africa. Uh, my name is Paulo Chitende. I'm working for Pan Africa. My name is Koko Sara Mota. I work for Socioeconomic Impact Management Advisory. And my name is Loretta Mudisele. Bom, eu sou o Hernan Carlos Cachota. Uh, trabalho para a DW. Eu sou o Nasso Soares. Uh, technical de campo da DW Angola. With the holistic land and livestock management, what we have managed to do through our project is to demonstrate that through good management practices for the environment, we are going to have water throughout the year. But how are we going to achieve good management practices? What we are looking at now is we need to make sure we manage our livestock so that we, at the end of the day, we save our land, we save the soil, Right? At the same time, we can conserve the moisture, we grow the grass. So that is um, the unique component of this project, which we have uh, managed to create on the ground. In this period, entre 2021 and 22, we did the restoration of 29 hectares of mango. E também identificamos alguns meios alternativos que é para apoiar na sobrevivência das comunidades. Refiro-me concretamente à apicultura, estamos a desenvolver a apicultura. E também formamos uma associação de mulheres que é para fazer o comércio do, do peixe. So EcoExist uh, focuses on addressing human elephant conflict. Yeah, we we one of the biggest uh, successes of the project um, that has been funded by USAID has been piloting a, a very um, unique and innovative approach to addressing one of the underlying drivers of human wildlife conflict, um, and that is land use conflicts. And so, so we, we piloted a project um, that used LUCIS, which is a land use conflict identification system. It's a model, it's a GIS model, um, mapping model, that actually puts all of the land uses and all of the potentially future land use allocations into a model that assesses where these land use conflicts will are quite likely occur. Uh, no essencial, o que nós aprendemos a implementar o projeto é que a comunidade aceitou o projeto no todo. 
ela sentiu-se dona das infraestruturas reabilitadas e, ao assumir essa responsabilidade, sentiu-se dona de fazer, de ajudar na comparticipação para com que, no futuro, possa-se fazer recuperação com os fundos locais a partir das comunidades. One thing that we learned is that the community participation and also involvement is very critical when it comes to programs that you are initiating, especially when you have a marginalized community like the Quest Speaking. So you need really to also understand the background in terms of their indigenous knowledge in terms of things that they know. Uh, a major part of this project was to have um bom envolvimento, uma boa entrega da comunidade uh, quanto àquilo que o projeto trouxe para a sua implementação. Uh, eu estava a dizer, por exemplo, eles tinham uma expectativa de uma coisa, que era receber um furo de água, uma infraestrutura, o que é necessário, não negamos isso, mas o projeto tinha um dado foco e tivemos que falar com eles, por exemplo, que, olha, é como ter uma viatura. Uma viatura é necessária, mas você precisa aprender a conduzir o carro, a verificar o óleo, a água muito cedo de manhã. E quando a viatura vem, é fácil, você já está instruído como usar. E eles, a partir daí, começaram a perceber realmente que ter informação, ter conhecimento é muito bom. E quando a infraestrutura chegar, eles estão em condições de fazer melhor gestão. We, we learned a lot. Um... And I think um, one of the most critical things is the importance of diverse partnerships. Um, we, I think, as a sector, need to be exploring uh, means to um, be more sustainable and not be so reliant on donor funding. Um, so, so partnerships with business and other sectors are, are critical. Um, and you know, partnerships build a really strong element of sustainability into work as well. And, The, the stronger partnerships are, the, the more potential there is that, um, you know, that additional impact can be leveraged and um, more results can be achieved, hopefully into the longer term. We have introduced a Mopaniwem uh, farming or semi-domestication uh, activity where we've established some demonstration plots in each of the districts. Uh, this is uh, meant to ensure there is continuous availability of the Mopani worm, because we have noted that in some of the districts, particularly in Bedbridge, there is a shifting trend in terms of availability. In one part of the districts, the worms are no longer available in sufficient quantities for commercialization. And also through this program, through our 130 um, ambassadors, we are going to reach out to 80,000 people in Gauteng and uh, Limpopo province. So, you know, we had a beautiful experience in the Alexandra Township of the city of Johannesburg, where we took the training to water warriors in that area. And um, these water warriors also are working along the Yaske um, River, which is highly polluted. And we realize that the pollution is because of human behavior. People come from different areas to dump in the river. So when we conducted the training, we told them that you are custodians of the river you know, next to you. You need to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. And now we told them that you can actually police the river and um, uh, stop people from illegally dumping in the river. Mm -hmm. So the community was so excited, so we, saying that we didn't know that we could do this. But because of this training, now we, we are contributing to the conservation of our river and protecting it as a community, and which, 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 which is something that they never thought they could do. Now they are taking ownership, which is very exciting. One of the key take home messages was working working with communities requires a lot of trust and patience it's not an, an easy task that one can do um, at the same time it's all about having a participatory approach to 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 whatever you would want to achieve at the end of the day yes but actually i think on agriculture 
I feel also, you know, we have learned that we have to pick up people and walk in baby steps. Like, you know, don't expect people to change something that has sustained them for centuries in one season. And, you know, kind of having a gradual change and picking people up where they are with the means that they're having. I think that was also one of the important lessons learned. And honestly, if people start practicing conservation agriculture only on two square meters and not on two hectares, we should also be perfectly fine with us. Uh, that should be perfectly fine with us because after all, if they see it works for them, they will expand and adopt it. Yes. In this duration of this project, we haven't really broadened our input as much as deepened it. And we learned a lot about how much time we should actually give to this process that we've been engaged in. Otherwise, we also learned quite exciting new alternative ideas to counteract climate, smart, climate change. You know, there's really, the opportunities are there in our area. There, there is resilience in our area and we've learned a lot on about that and we'd love to implement that in the next stage. Our project is focusing on water source protection, um, which is about um, mapping sources of water in, in the community and uh, how the human lifestyle is impacting on the water sources. So it was about the, the solutions that came from a desperate situation of diapers on, or disposable nappies being scattered all over to then learn to recycle and upcycle and add value to what is considered waste. Mm. Yeah, we uh, have uh, very vulnerable people living in the two national parks in Kwando Kubango to diversify uh, their livelihoods using honey as value chain as an entry point. Uh, actually, we distributed uh, 1,172 beehives. We are going to distribute more beehives in the coming days. We are able to help people who have never for long feel neglected. So for us, that it's really important to see that people bringing life to people, showing them that they, are, they can be honored and that they can improve their lives. For us, working for such type of people is really, for us, is a blessing.